Greetings, and welcome to episode 8. In this episode, we'll be discussing the soul and all the responsibilities that go with that. We'll also be discussing how some people don't seem to have souls and what that means for them and for you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. The soul. What if I told you the soul was nothing more than a recording device to document your particular point of view through a particular journey in a corporeal form? Not necessarily human. You could have been a, a rabbit, a dog, a tree. Of course, tree the life cycle of a tree, if unperturbed, last hundreds of years sometimes so you're looking at a redwood versus a rabbit a rabbit's gonna live what 10 years tops if he doesn't get eaten first whereas a tree like if say you were a redwood how many hundreds of years could you live but your job or the your job as the host to this soul is to experience life and from what I've gathered in my 40 years of observation pretty much is all it is it's 40 years of observation and seeing patterns seeing if I can repeat those patterns mechanically so to speak <clears throat> that is to say not just waiting on chance or synchronicity to bring this back into being but try and bring it into being purposefully. So, 40 years of observation. I, I see that the only real sin, and this is not about morality, good and evil, because as I stated in other videos, good and evil are points of view. These points of view are based on the person perpetrating whatever act, kind, or evil, and the person viewing said person perpetrating that act. Morality is based on what we like and what we don't like. Good is the things we like, evil is the things we don't like. So it is possible to do a bad or evil thing and get a good result because everyone doesn't agree with the action doesn't necessarily make it evil just like if a person does something and everybody agrees with it doesn't make that action right <clears throat> so the only real sin that I found is lying because like like the meme that's going around social media said you had one job one experience life and then tell the truth about everything you did. This is the number one responsibility of the host of that soul. Of your soul that you're nurturing through this experience or any experience you go through and you're sent here with a soul. Is to document everything that takes place and then pretty much to report on it in an honest fashion. Everything from as far back to birth as you can remember to this point in your life right now. Tell the truth. That's why lying twists you up inside so much. That's why being lied to twists you up inside so much. And people pretend that if you lie about it, that it happened the way you tell that lie enough times and it, it happened that way. I don't know if you actually believe that or if it just you do it so many, so long that you really do actually believe it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, that's the the number one and in my opinion the only sin. You want to walk a good path, everything in moderation. Everything. Sure, no one's telling you not to go out and experience life. By all means, experience life. That's what you're here for. You're not here to pretend to be perfect. If you were here to just sit and breathe with very minimal interaction 
then you're probably a teacher. And that's still an experience. But you're probably not going to run into those situations that would cause you to have to lie about anything you've did, done or said or seen. For the rest of us that decided we were going to teach a little later in life, we've already said it, done it, and seen it. And so it is our responsibility to tell the truth about it. That's how you nurture that divine spark. Think about it. If the universe can trust wholeheartedly every bit of information that's channeled through you, through that spark and back to source, you'll be more likely to have an open connection with source or God or whatever you choose to call it. I call it source. When you lie, you close that off a little bit because you out of embarrassment or shame or whatever, you close that off a little bit. Source doesn't turn away from you. But the more you lie, the more you close that off. And the more you close that off until finally it's completely closed off and you have no connection to source whatsoever. And then you'll say, oh, source, why have you forsaken me? God left. God left my life. But really you turned your back on source. You turned your back on God. You had one job. That's, that's what he's thinking. You had one job. Just tell the truth. Live your life and tell the truth about it. You're going to go into situations where you're probably going to have to lie. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to do what it takes to get through that situation. Fine. Tell the truth about it. This is exactly how it went down. If you can't tell the truth outwardly for fear of repercussions, at least come to terms with it within you. Maintain your connection to source. I would say tell the truth no matter what anyway. Because it's better to rip the band-aid off than to peel it off really slowly. And the truth ends up coming out anyway. So you're not really hiding anything. It just seems to me that there's too many people running around trying to be perfect. Narcissistic. It's, it, I, I can't decide if it's prideful or, or wh what would that be considered? Vanity? To want to look that good that you'd lie about everything just so you look perfect? You're not here to be perfect. You're here to experience life. And then let that report, I mean the report, you don't have to say a word. Just the fact that you exist and you have that recording device it's all being recorded and then you all you're doing is not altering it as you live and breathe. The information is automatically being uploaded and you're not altering it. Well, what if their version doesn't match mine? As long as you know you're telling the truth, it doesn't matter what their version is. It really, it doesn't. It's not open for discussion. It's not a sports team, so you don't need a cheering section. It's, it's your soul. It's your connection to source or God your divine spark is yours to do with as you wish if you practice life the way I practice life which is live it live your life but own up to everything you do you'll notice the connection getting stronger you'll notice that there's a few more things you can do you'll notice that certain abilities will become we'll say available for you to try out because there's nothing in this universe that is permanent if, you, if something happens uh, you you adapt this new ability and you don't like it you can shut it off for the most part there are abilities I have that I wish I could shut off but I haven't either because I don't know how or maybe I just don't want to probably both Anyway, and as I was saying a little bit earlier when during the intro, if you've noticed, there are some people, and I don't mean the people that we just have as a collective decided are evil and probably don't have souls like politicians, lawyers, blah, 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 corporate 
henchmen and all that. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, just the everyday per person. You just get that sense that they don't have a soul. Like, I experience life through sh the chakras, the swirling energies. And the soul adds an extra glow to that. It adds, like, I'm staring at a silhouette or, like, the moon going in front of the sun. You still see the burning edges of the sun around the moon. That's what it looks like to me. It's just the brilliance coming out of a silhouette. That's the soul. The, the aura, from what I gather from my abilities, your aura comes from your chakras. And the chakra you most identify with is the color of your aura. My aura is purple. So when I look at someone and I don't separate the view, I see the color of their soul pretty much. The color that their soul reflects through would be your aura or the chakra you most identify with. Well, in a person that doesn't have a soul, I will still see the chakras in my mind, but they won't be light. It'll be clay. Clay circles turning within the clay body. And if they're on the right path, if they're headed in the right direction spiritually, there will be light at the points of friction where those wheels, where this the, the clay wheel touches the clay body. There will be light emitting from there. And that tells me that that person is on the right path. Whether or not they have a soul, they are headed in the right direction to get one. Uh, which reminded me of the movie, or the, the, the book, the story, whatever, Pinocchio, which was, tell the truth, and you can become a real boy. Hmm. That started sounding really familiar once I started making these connections and seeing these things in other people. <coughs> Excuse me, because what did I say? You have one job if you have a soul. Live your life, recording every moment that you can force, that you can see, and experience and then tell the truth about it and then you have these people that don't have souls but are headed in the right direction because I can see the energy the energy it's like a boy scout <laughs> that's a horrible analogy but a boy scout making a fire for the first time he takes that stick and he puts it on another stick or, or a piece of wood and he's doing this and if he does his job right, <clears throat> excuse me, he starts a fire. Same principle. If he stick, this person sticks to this path, and this information is being generated and, and recorded and uploaded properly, that person is headed in the right direction to get a soul. So those of you that are sensitive to these things and you see or you feel someone without a soul, don't automatically take it as a negative because take the time to maybe adjust what you're seeing because maybe, just maybe, they're headed in the right direction. Now, I've come in contact with people that don't have souls, have never had a soul, and aren't going to get one. Not in this lifetime. And I still, I try not to judge because you never know how they got themselves into that predicament. Some people had a soul and don't anymore and if you talk to them about it, they can, they'll tell you in, an, in a roundabout way that they remember having one, and they can almost pinpoint the exact moment that they didn't have one anymore. And it's probably, excuse me, through decisions they've made over their lives where they were extremely dishonest and had to cut off from source, but carrying around your little divine spark, that little piece of source that, that most of us have, was too much of a burden. So you completely just do away with the spark, the connection, the whole bit. <clears throat> I can't fathom it. <clears throat> I can't fathom throwing away eternity for a lifetime that lasts two breaths. You know? <laughs> oh, oh, now I'm dead. 
would never sell out eternity for riches that only last what? What do we live? 80, 85 years? Some of us live to be 120. Some of us. And that's how long you get your riches. When you have this priceless possession that most of us are sent here with. And all you have to do is to maintain it is experience life. And all you have to do to maintain your connection, your uplink, is to tell the truth. So you're sending honest information back. You're not corrupting the data with, uh, well, maybe it happened this way, but, you know, you never can be too sure. Well, why can't you be too sure? Weren't you there? One job. You had one job. <laughs> and I, 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 I think... I find it phenomenal that there are a lot of the people I see that don't have souls that still have these clay chakras spinning and creating this spark and you get to see it starting from nothing. It's starting from nothing. This person didn't just have one and lose it. This person never had one and you're watching that within this lifetime they'll either develop one or upon their death they're going to be granted one because they're putting in whatever effort. I don't even ask. I just I'm, I just look and I'm just, wow, I'm, I become very proud of that person that they're putting in that kind of effort that they're going to get the ultimate gift at the end just from the hard work they're doing. And it's not even hard work. Just don't lie. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to others. Well, you, it's impossible to get this. not impossible to get through life. It's impossible to get through life telling the truth and think you're never going to get punished for the truth you tell. That's what's impossible. So all you're saying is, I don't, it's impossible if you plan on living your life without ever getting punished. Yeah, it is. It is. But see, here's the kicker. That's why they came up with all those moral rules, like no lying, no cheating, no this, no that. So you wouldn't have to encounter a situation that would put you in a place where you'd have to lie to get through it. If you don't covet, you don't have to lie about coveting. If you don't steal, you don't have to lie about stealing. If you don't lie, you don't have to lie about lying, and so on and so forth. I'm not saying don't do any of these things. What I'm saying is everything in moderation, A, and B, if you're going to do these things, own up to it. Take responsibility for your actions as a human being on this planet going through this journey because you're not really even a human being. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. So you are that soul. Your main function in the universe, your only function in the universe is to accumulate information to transmit back to source. Well, why is that so important? The information itself isn't important. Your unique perspective is important. You are the only being in the known universe, at least in this dimension, that sees things the way you see things. Now, you can teach people to see things your way, or you can even force people to see things your way, but that's still not their point of view. It's your point of view, and you really only need one person with your point of view. And the minute you start saying, well, my point of view is the right one, and everybody should see it my way, as soon as you say that, you've just become the problem. Because now you're going to go out and probably commit these gruesome atrocities to get people to turn it to your way. But the whole point is to have all of these different perspectives. Even if we were all walking the same path, <clears throat> excuse me, in the same direction, at the same time, to the same beat, same footsteps, each point of view is still going to be different. We're taught to eat the same way. We wear the same clothing as everybody else. Everybody has the, a job that is exactly like everybody else's. No man above another, no man below another. And each perspective will still be different. You'll still appreciate the gray clothes we all wear, while that person, oh, I could take it or leave it, and that person, oh, I, I absolutely hate it. And this person just, oh, loves it. And then that guy wants to run around naked. They just, they're not telling you this because you never asked. <clears throat> because everyone's in a position to assume 
then everybody loves it because everybody does it. It's not the case. The case is your unique perspective. That's what the universe is after. No matter how much we do the same, how are you viewing it? Like, and if, if, this is this is another thing. You could say, well, how do you know that that's all we're here to do is tell the truth? You ever notice that when a, a truth, it doesn't matter if it's a, a truth, arbitrary truth, or a, a, a strong emotional truth, a religious truth, whatever. When that truth strikes your soul, you hear it in your head, and once you understand what that truth is, it hits your soul like an epiphany, like you already knew it in your recording device and then it starts regurgitating this this knowledge you already knew not in maybe a fashion that you understand because not a lot of people take the time to learn how to talk to themselves I mean really learn how to talk to themselves your soul speaks to you in the form of psycholinguistics imagery it's not gonna say hey dude remember that time no it's gonna say give you a picture or a subtle feeling or a smell that associates with a truth that you already know. Trouble is, not all these truths were learned in this lifetime. So it has to be really, really careful how it speaks to you. So usually it, it'll just tell you, I know for certain beyond a shadow of a doubt that what you just heard and understood is truth. And it doesn't say that, <clears throat> excuse me, but it will go out of its way to let you know that. And when I say you, I mean the you that's up here that you actually believe is you. So when this truth strikes you, and you just know it, and then you go and do a little bit of research and find out that that was absolutely true, then you start to understand that this whole mechanism is based on the truth. It only functions with the truth. That's why when you lie, you get the, that, that egotistical satisfaction of getting over on someone because they believed you, but you do not get any kind of satisfaction here in your heart. And as a matter of fact, when I lie, it twists up something fierce. It makes me almost feel sick. I get the same feeling when someone lies to me. And once you decide that you don't want to be lied to, you're also making the decision that you're not going to lie anymore. Because that feeling that you get when someone lies to you, you can just automatically assume that's exactly how they feel when you lie to them. When it strikes your soul as bullshit, it probably is bullshit. <clears throat> if you don't believe in the soul, if you don't believe that you were put here for a reason, that's that's on you my truth that my soul projects to me or should I say that I project to me via the soul is that I was here for a reason and keep up the good work and giggle giggle apparently I'm a smart ass not the point If you don't have this in your life, if you don't see direction, if you don't believe in the soul, I actually feel bad for you. And I'm not talking about a divinity to make you to be morally superior. I'm not morally superior. I make bad decisions all the time. I'm, I'll be the first one to tell you. I make spiritually wrong decisions. I don't eat the what's prescribed to be that spiritual diet I mean I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian I still eat meat <clears throat> I'm not perfect I'm not trying to take a moral high ground I'm just trying to tell you if you don't believe in the soul there's a good possibility you might not have one doesn't mean you can't obtain one what does that mean to you that means keep headed in the right direction 
if you're on this path and you're learning these things like chakras, the third eye, meditation, keep at it. Because when it all comes down to it, it's just energy. And harmonic resonance can happen anywhere. You take a tuning fork and set it, you strike it, and you stand it next to another tuning fork, through harmonic resonance, that other tuning fork is going to start to resonate. Even just the tiniest bit, it's going to start to resonate. You understand? So if you're here, you're in good company. Or at least you're starting on the path to finding good company. Or maybe you belong here. Stick around. If you don't have one, you can acquire one. If you feel that you've lost your soul, you can get it back. It's very hard work. You can be, it can, it, you can get it back in a day, less than a day. All is required is that you acknowledge that it's gone, acknowledge that you want it back, and then start back to telling the truth. And with intention, Open your heart chakra with the intention of reestablishing your connection to source. Well, what's source? What is source to you? Is source all everything? Or does source have a pinpoint location? A place you could travel from here to there to go see? That is completely up to you. Everybody sees it differently. Everybody sees, everybody sees it according to their journey, their unique perspective. And some of us have the same idea of what it is for us. But it's still our own unique perspective. It's never going to be 100% like them or 100% like them. But it's a start anyway. And I especially urge those that feel that they have lost their soul to try and get it back. I mean... Message me. Contact me on here. Or leave, just leave a comment or a video response and say, hey, look, this is, this is what's going on in my life. I want to know if you could step by step teach me how to reestablish this connection. Yeah, I can do that. The only reason why I haven't taken the time to, to elaborate on it here is because I give myself 30 minutes per, per episode. Sometimes I run a little bit over, but it's not nearly enough time to talk about some of these topics, especially not something as vast as the soul. I'm giving you a summarization of 40 years of observation. <clears throat> and I think I do did a pretty good job of it. Matter of fact, I would like to just keep going, but man, some of this stuff I could actually break up into other episodes so I'm not gonna just keep going and keep, keep going and keep going but like I said if you don't have one and you feel like well I just don't feel like I have one doesn't mean you can't establish a connection now doesn't mean you're not already in the process of forging a connection now it doesn't mean I don't care if you're not even from here and by here I mean not from earth not from this plane of existence if you're not from this plane of existence and suddenly you feel like, well, I don't have a connection, you're not connected to your source anymore because you've pretty much you've gone through some membrane hole in the fabric of space-time and you're no longer in a position to have a connection to your source. But that doesn't mean you can't connect to our source. It's like I'm breathing the air in this room. When I go into that room, I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm going to keep breathing. So it, it could be just as simple as a, as a language barrier. Or, or maybe you're not accustomed to the frequencies in this particular dimension. I don't know. I don't care. What I do care about is if you have one, nurture it. Nurture that connection to source. If you don't have one, but you're on the right path, and I, be, I, I could see your clay chakras and your clay body and that's the, the, the spark of energy going around those circles I would say keep up the good work you're definitely headed in the right direction and being around people that create that positive harmonic resonance 
you can go nowhere but up. And like I said, turn your intention, focus your intentions on establishing or reestablishing a connection to source. Whatever your heart tells you source is for you, that's what source is for you. Just keep listening. And when you're listening, it's not going to be, it's not going to be words. It's going to be a feeling. It's going to be psycholinguistics, a picture, a smell, a feeling, or, or a synchronicity. You have a question, but your soul or your fledgling soul or your, this spark you're trying to nurture lacks the language because it lacks the experience of how to talk to you. So it puts out a request. I'm not far enough along to explain this. Can I get some help? And then so-and-so comes over, or you find this video, or you find that video, and boom, there's your answer. So just keep at it. And if you don't have one because you gave it away or cut yourself off from it out of shame or embarrassment, you can get it back pretty much the same way. Turn your intention toward reestablishing your connection to source and there's going to be a whole lot of self-honesty involved in that because you have to tear down everything you've ever done to block that connection to open that channel back up <clears throat> anyway we're getting on to the 30 minute mark I really hope you've enjoyed this video uh, favorite it if you want Click the like button. Please click the like button if you've enjoyed it. Or if you learned anything, click the like button. And uh, hit the subscribe button too if you'd like to come back and get more information. But uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And until next time, you hang in there.